my name is Neil Malik from Knack Training, and for today's Everyday Office video, we're going to be talking about using tables as dynamic references. In July, I'll be going to New Orleans for the IAAP 2017 Summit, and one of the sessions I'll be conducting is about uh, basically professional level tools in Microsoft Excel. Things that you can use to really bump up your game in Excel. And one of those things is being able to have your spreadsheet and specifically the calculations in your spreadsheet be very flexible. So let's take a look at what's happening in this spreadsheet right now. As you can see over here on the right, I have this idea where I want to add up all of the first quarter. And you can see here that products one, two, three, and four are being added together into this final total for the first quarter. And this happens all the time. You want to add up a column or you want to add up a row, no big deal. But here's the thing that's a little bit difficult. The odds are very good that at some point you're going to need to put another product right down here at the bottom. So I call this product 5. And you're going to need to start to add in the Q1, Q2, Q3 results. And I want you to pay attention to what it says in cell I4. Right now it says $1,169,000. So if I go in here and I add in, let's say, $400,000 as the amount that we sold of product five in the first quarter, hopefully this will move from $1.1 million to $1.5 million over there in cell I4. But as you can see, it doesn't do that. Now, it does add a little green corner onto the cell to let you know, hey, you know what? There are cells that aren't included in this. So the formula omits some adjacent cells. But what I want is for the tool to sort of automatically do this for me, for me not to have to go back and update my calculations in the future. So to do this, what I'll do here is remove the existing calculations and I'll remove this product five that I was just adding. And let's go back to the basics. Here I have Q1 results, Q2 results, etc. And over here on the side, I want to be able to total these up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this data on the left into a table. By doing that, that's going to allow Excel to understand that people add more information to the table. No big deal. So I click directly onto the data here on the left-hand side. I go to my Insert tab at the top of the screen, and the third button from the left is the Table button. And what this does is it sort of converts um, a normal set of cells into a set of cells that are recognized. So I go here and click on Table. As you can see, I could also use the keyboard shortcut Control-T and then click OK. Now, of course, I could go up to the top of my screen and you know make sure that it's formatted beautifully, but really the formatting is not the point. The point of this is what happens when I do a calculation now? Well, if you look at your design tab at the top of the screen, you'll notice that your table is probably called something simple like table one or table two or table three. Now, it's a good idea to take a moment here and name that table something that makes sense to you, not just table one. So I'm going to call this one quarterly sales results. When you do this, you cannot put spaces in the name of the table. So I'm going to do capital Q, lowercase orderly, capital S, lowercase ales, and capital R, lowercase results and then hit enter. And now that table is now called quarterly sales results. Now watch what happens when I go to calculate the sum total of the first quarter. I'm going to go here to cell I4. I'm going to use uh, equal sign sum. And then I would normally just go over here and highlight from cell B5 down to cell B8. But as soon as I do that, do you see what happens with that calculation? It says now, it's the sum of quarterly sales results, which was the name of the table that I just gave it. And then in square brackets, Q1 results, which is, as you can see, the label from the top of that column. I can simply close the parentheses now, and it adds up that $1.1 million in the exact same way. Let's try it again with Q2 total. Sum, 
from C5 to C8 becomes quarterly sales results, and then in square brackets, Q2 results. So now maybe I can do this by hand. I'm going to type in quarterly. As you can see right there, quarterly sales results shows up on the drop down menu. So I'm just going to hit tab to accept that. And I know that it goes in square brackets. I'm going to type in square brackets and then just choose, oh yes, square brackets Q3 results. Close the square brackets and close the parentheses. So you see how easy that is. If you remember what you named the table, and if you have a, a simple name for the top of the column, it's actually very easy to do. Again, equal sign sum of quarterly sales results. Once I get to this point, I can hit tab on my keyboard to accept it. Then square brackets, Q4. Close the square brackets, close parentheses, hit enter. Okay, so at this point, I've done a lot of work and ended up with the exact same thing I had a moment ago. But here is the benefit. As soon as I go down to cell A9 and I type in product five, and hit tab, you'll see that the table grows to accommodate product five. And now if I say that it was $400,000 worth of product five, watch cell I4, it'll go from 1.169 to 1.569. I go to cell C9, I type in $250,000, hit tab and that $250,000 gets added to the Q2 total. And so what you see here is that the calculation using the column Q1 results, as opposed to the cells named A5, A6, A7, and A8, makes it incredibly flexible and useful to us so that we don't have to go back and recheck these calculations on a regular basis.